three things to do when he's gone into avoidant mode. This is a conversation I have with so many women. What do I do in real time when those hard hitting emotions kick in and our patterns are surfacing and I'm still trying to build these muscles of being healthy and present for myself yet I'm being challenged in this way that is not supportive of that. So I wanna take a deeper dive into what, to, what you can do in real time when he's gone into that mode and how you can love and support yourself through it. For those of you new to my channel, I would love to invite you to subscribe. I release a video weekly. Number one, okay. So you're in a situation where he is in avoidant mode. He is immersed in work, he is kind of in his you know, cave, he is isolated, he is short, he is not social, whatever your situation may be. The first thing to do to take care of yourself is to be very, very aware of the narration that starts to occur. Because the first thing that happens is we start to feel a lot of sensation within the body, right? And one thing that we tend to do when we are feeling a lot of sensation is we narrate it we start to assign a dialogue and a story to it. And before you know it, we can make the story amplified and exaggerated in ways that do not serve us at all. And we are reacting to hypothetical, worst case, catastrophizing sort of scenarios as opposed to just dealing with what's happening in real time. So the ability to like be in our bodies without narrating means to just really drop down and start to notice like where you want to assign a story to those sensations and to just be with yourself. Being with those sensations without feeling like you've got to do something with them or play hot potato with them, right? Like put them on someone or, you know, start moving into, you know, accusation or chaos of any kind, but use it as an opportunity to maybe settle into yourself and really practice the art of timing of this is going to be a conversation that needs to be had with your partner or with the other person, but that you're safe to feel and that you're safe to ride some of these waves and get underneath the experience you're having without, you know, sort of reaching or going outside of yourself to fix it, right? Always remember that the ego wants the final solution. The ego is the part of us that wants that outcome. And it can lead to unhealthy bypassing and unhealthy coping mechanisms because we just are going into fix it mode to avoid everything that's coming up. And instead, it's like being gentle with ourselves and allowing ourselves to move through it and get underneath some of those emotions so we are not just creating a bunch of damage in hopes to like fix it because a lot of times what's required is that time and space to move through it in our own and this is where new insights and new ideas and things we've never thought of before begin to make their way in number two learning how to just release and comfort yourself, right? So we talk about moving into body, but sometimes like those thoughts are so loud in our head or those fears are so loud in our head that it's so hard to like just sit with ourselves. And so we can, you know, just do different mantras, whether it be just closing your eyes and doing a child's pose, putting your legs up a wall, putting a hand on a heart and a hand on a belly, calling a trusted friend, reading, um, you know, a quote or a passage that means something to you giving yourself short little simple phrases that offer like a level of comfort and safety within, maybe lighting a candle, just reminding yourself that you know you are safe and that you are loved and that you are cared for in this world. We're just really beginning to bring in grounding practices so we can release any of the old narratives and storylines. And these are all simple practices that just move the needle a tad, right? That invite something different in and allow us to take care of ourselves when the other person doesn't have the capacity to take care of us, right? This is one of the biggest mistakes I see with women where when a man's shut down on any level, he doesn't really have the capacity to hear what's on your mind in that moment, you know? And we'll so often have this compulsion or this impulse to say, if I could just make him understand, 
But this is a short-sighted way of thinking because he literally is shut down on a certain level. So he does not have the capacity or the brain power to hear you. And so we are not setting the situation up well when we sort of you know, insert ourselves in this way and kind of plow over the, the feedback that we're receiving. And so we're really learning to care for ourselves and understanding that there's a time and a place to communicate. And we want to set both ourselves up and the other person well, so we truly can feel heard and connected with them. Number three, expand your world start doing things that are less predictable because one thing that happens when our partner is in avoidant mode if we are more of an anxious type we can easily just go into waiting like are they better yet is it is it good now are we good now are you ready to talk and of course this is all sort of like a gentle pulling and it's going to feel very disempowering and so if this is your situation it's really an opportunity to immerse yourself and expand your world in some new way for those of you that know my story when i was in the thick of like this kind of dynamic in my own life i signed up for knitting classes i did pottery, um, you know, wheel classes, I did dance classes, I did a yoga teacher training. I immersed myself in learning about myself and moving into things that excited me in life. And it doesn't have to be like big things, right? It can be little things where you're just choosing yourself moment to moment and you're breaking up the monotony. You're, you know, doing something new, almost like a yoga pose where you're kind of in a balancing pose. All you can think about in that moment is staying upright. And it's kind of that way when we expand our world and learn a new activity, our focus goes into really trying to be with that present moment immersed in that activity where we realize we're beginning to embody a different energy and release this energy of waiting or of anxiety or needing the present moment to be different than it is. And so this will also bring you into a much more empowered space. So I would invite you to just consider things that you love or things that you've put on the back burner that would invite you to bring in a different focus. And then, you know, when the timing is right, being able to have those bigger conversations with your partner. But in that interim, really having ways in which you can fully show up for yourself and be proud of how you moved through it and supported yourself. So I hope this video is nourishing to those of you that are going through this or are in the thick of things right now in your dynamic or situation. And I would love to invite you to check out my group program that's coming up, Discovering Your Divine Feminine Essence. All the details are on my website and I will link it below. And I would love if this speaks to you for you to join us in February. Much love and I'll see you next week.